where we were. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. These are challenging times. And we are directed to pray for the president. You may not agree with him. You may, my na you may not agree with stem cell research, which he's opened up now, which has just been a dastardly thing. But we still are, through the word of God and honoring God's word, we are to pray for those in, 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 in uh, uh, what's that word I want to use? Subjection over us. Come on, say amen. amen. Well, it's, it's something that we've got to do. Satan is not master over you. Satan is not master over you. He's not master. In fact, you are master over him. But he's deceived you. He's deceived me. He's deceived many people. And when something happens, when they go, oh, I guess this is just the way it's going to be. This is not the way it has to be. Across the headlines today, the Seattle PI in Graham, Washington, a man down there kills four of his children. Three days ago in Hampton, New York, a man goes into a place and he kills, what, 13, 14 people and kills himself. In, in some more yesterday in Pennsylvania, four policemen, four, four policemen are killed. A few days ago, uh, uh, Oakland, California, four policemen are killed down there, shot down, bang, 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 like that. There's a war going on. It's out there in the natural realm. It's also in the spiritual realm. The natural realm is always a sign of the spiritual realm. It all, they all follow together. It says power to tread on serpents and scorpions. It means just that. We are over the enemy, not under the enemy. It will be war. It will be war. We, are, we, we have power over him. Well, pastor, I don't feel that way all the time. I don't either. I don't either. But the Word of God says we have it, so then I'm going to do it, and I'm going to hang on to it, and I'm going to battle it, and I'm going to see the victory. Cancer is a hellish thing to have placed over you, but I know there's victory, and God has given me a word. He's given me a word. He didn't give me the word. He's given me a word for me to hang on that we're going to see victory. And it's going to be the greatest victory I've ever seen in my life. Amen. Because most believers have never walked in authority, they don't understand authority. Never walked in authority. Because most believers have the mindset of a servant. Well, whatever you say, Master. Whatever happens. Whatever happens, it's okay. I guess that's God's will for my life. I guess, God, I guess God's trying to teach me something through this. I guess this is just the way it's going, on. it's going to be. See, that's a lie. That's a lie right out of hell. God has never brought sickness. He's never brought some of these miserable things to people's lives. It's bad people doing bad things. It's good people not hearing what God wants, where he wants them to go, what the direction is that he's trying to lead them. Not taking time to hear from the Lord. The centurion in Matthew 8. Remember the story in Matthew 8 about the centurion? See, he knows authority. Yes. He knows authority. Because mm. authority is vested authority. In other words, some municipality or some state or the police departments or, or the United States Army. When we went into the army in the Korean War, you raised your right hand and you, you swore to uphold the laws and the, the Constitution of the United States of America and the laws of the, of the United States Army, blah, blah, blah. And you put your hand down and you are now a soldier. You are, you're, you're in the army. You come out of the police department and you stand up there and you raise your hand and I swear to do, uphold the laws of the city of Seattle and da 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 and after it's over you're a policeman. Mm. Now most people who haven't walked through that, they don't understand authority. Mm. They don't understand that you have authority. And you don't feel any different, but you have authority from the uniform that you wear. The United States Army uniform or a police uniform or whatever it may be. Turn with me to Matthew 8. Would you just real quick? I want you to see this. This is a guy who knew authority. Mm -hmm. I like him. They sent, he sent uh, servants pleading with Jesus to come. And he's talking, he's asking him to come. And Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. Now listen to what the centurion said. said. He said, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof. 
but only speak a word and my servant will be healed. Just speak a word. Just speak a word. Speak a word in authority. When you speak the name of Jesus in authority, when you speak that name of Jesus in authority, something happens in the spirit realm. You can't see it. Sometimes you can't feel it. And sometimes you can. But when you speak a word, you say, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, that spirit of sickness, I command you to lose my body. That spirit of depression. Have you ever been, you ever just get, have you ever, oh, you guys haven't happened, but I've been, sometimes a spirit, like a spirit of depression come on you, and you just feel like, crap. Mm -hmm. You ever felt that way? Just, uh, and you can't figure out why. It's called a spirit of depression, a spirit of discouragement. And it just comes down on you. And the only way you can get rid of it is to tell it to leave. It's a spirit. It's something come down. It makes you feel miserable. And I, I encourage you. I encourage you that what I'm sharing with you today is to get you to stand up again and say, enemy, Satan, that's far enough. I am master over you. I am your master. You're not my master. I am master over you through the name of Jesus, through what Jesus has done. See, truth is, <laughs> it takes guts, yep. courage, and strength to make a stand for Jesus in a world so messed up it thinks good is bad and bad is good that's hard to do that's hard to do but I'm encouraging you today this is this is a message that God has given me today for you and he says Dick I want you to wear your t-shirt again I don't want that anointing to rest on you today so when you're speaking today it goes into their hearts, into their hearts, yes. into yes. their lives, and into the families. As they sat here in that circle last night, I thought, oh my God, we need a mighty move of your Holy Spirit in our lives. I don't mean a move, I mean a mighty move of God's Spirit in our lives. If you've, uh, I wish I'd show you how, if you've ever been to the ocean, and you know you walk out in the ocean a little bit, you can feel that undertow. You can feel it pulling on your feet. It's, it's, sometimes it's really strong. It practically pull you in the sand. You don't want to go out too deep or it'll suck you right out into the ocean, as my wife and I discovered many years ago. And you stand on that sand, you can feel that pressure. That's the pressure that the, that the enemy has on you. As when, you. when you make a stand, he's pulling against you. When you make a stand, he's pulling against you. He does not want you. He does not want, he does not want you to stand today. He does not want you to stand today and take authority over him. He does not want you to grasp this message today. He wants you to sit there today with your mind in neutral and say, Well, it sounds good, but it can't happen to me. I'm telling you, it can happen to you. If it's in this book, it can happen to you. The only person who will keep it going out of your life is the enemy himself. And you listen to his lies long enough. <laughs> I get excited because I can feel victory. Amen. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. I can feel victory. When Jesus taught, it was common for him to say, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. And that's what you've got to have today spiritual ears. I know you've got natural ears. But we're talking about spiritual ears. Because spiritual ears hear the, hear the Spirit of God speaking. That's what spiritual ears. Spiritual eyes let you things that see the things of the Spirit. And we have, been, we have been overcome. We have been overcome with the teaching from the air of Calvinism. And not the Word of God. We've let that drift in. I was listening to somebody the other day talking. They were talking Calvinism. I thought, where did you, you get 